You guys see the carburetor is like, like this. See how this is all, what the hell do you do to this thing, dude? Hey guys, Dan here. And so today we're gonna go ahead and work on my buddy's Massport push lawnmower. Now, when you're talking about this style lawnmower in the industry, we usually refer to them as a push mower, even though this one is self-propelled, but it's a little 20 inch pusher. It could be 21, 22, 19, 18, but we call it 20 inch pusher. So we actually are gonna go ahead and uh, install this new um, self-propelled cable, which engages the transmission from the operator's bar up here. His, his cable is trashed and I'll show you close up pictures in a little bit. So if you're, if you got a mass port and it's a, this is the model uh, 479904. All right, this, this one, I'll show you the engine and everything, but yeah, this is a self-propelled model. Uh, pretty cool, actually. We'll go over some of the features in a minute. Uh, but what you're looking for is, if I can get this out of my way, uh, you're looking for the part number for this. The actual mass port part number is 765434MP, as in Michael Papa. Okay, so that's the actual throttle cable that goes all the way up here and includes this box and it connects up here with a nut and bolt. Um, I'll show you that. All the way down, wraps around, and then it goes to the transmission and it engages the belt. So let's take a look at this motor uh, and this lawnmower up close and then we will go ahead and get started on replacing the cable. I think the hardest part of replacing this cable is going to be trying to film it. This gets bolted up to the top and I'll show you guys that. That'll be easy. But this, the work is going to be inside this smart chute and it's really just a matter of popping the old one out and pushing the new one in and then sliding this into the little arm. That's it. That's all that's to it. Actually zero tools required except maybe to get the old one out, I might need to reach in there with needle nose pliers and squeeze it out. I don't know how I'm going to show you guys that. Um, there's just no way to get a camera in there, but uh, we'll take before and after pictures, maybe? Let's see what we can do. So I can take this and open this up. And uh, use a bungee cord to hold that open, and then I'll get, a, I'll get you guys a picture of that. All right, that ought to work. Uh, let me see if I can show you what we got going on in there. Okay, so actually, right there is the end of the cable, right here. So that's the end of the cable right here, okay? And then that part that we'd have to squeeze together is really just right there. It's that simple. And I just have to squeeze it together, pop it out, and then fish the line out, cut these zip ties off. And then right here, we have a small bolt right here to pull the box off, cut this cable out, and then we have a bolt right there for the end of the cable. And in that package came a small nut and bolt. So we got all this part done. Now what I got to do, I got to reach in there. And what I'm going to do off camera, because it's impossible to film it, is 
take this, all right? I'm gonna just grab that arm of the transmission, put a little slack in it, and I'm gonna pop that out, the old one. Then I'm gonna squeeze this together with my pliers, right here, like this, and slide this out, and then fish the cable out, fish the new one in, pop it in, and put this on, run this up, nut and bolt it just like it was originally, and then put the nut and bolt in this right here, and his mower is ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and sharpen the blade, and I asked him if he could pick up an air cleaner, oil, uh, 20W50 for these hot summer months, and possibly a spark plug. So he's working on that. So he might uh, show up uh, today with that. He might not, I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, so I'll be right back and we will have this installed. All right, yeah, so like I said, the hardest part about this job, about changing this cable, would actually be trying to film it. Um, definitely not something easy to record because of the location, but hey, we got it. Uh, everything's all together now, so I just put his zip ties on. And then uh, the only thing left to do now is try it out. Too easy. I believe I link to this Chicago Electric um, Electric Impact in my video descriptions. You guys should check it out. Yeah, you can only polish a turd so far. This blade is shot. So I don't know if he's going to be able to bring me one this weekend or not. I mean, he's got tools. He's mechanical. He could change his own blade out. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. So for video purposes, uh, we can continue moving along. I usually like to hand thread it on about as far as I can because when you're using an impact, if something happens, it's too late and you screwed it up. So I get it on pretty tight, then I can just give it a couple taps and be done with it. And that, my friends, is all she wrote. Let's put this thing in the grass. What do you say? All right, so one thing about a self-propelled mower, whenever you change the cable or the transmission or something, and you wanna know if you have it right, when you're, you should be able to free roll it backwards when it's not engaged, right? But when you engage the transmission, most of them, if the cable's right, it's gonna stop and not allow it to roll backwards, okay? That holds true with a lot of different machines. No clue what we're doing here, probably choke. Is there a primer ball? I don't know. The carburetor's all stuck up in the air. Squeeze this, I'm sure. Give it a pull. I'm willing to bet. You know what I like about this mower? It's heavy. The steel deck, it feels nice and heavy. Like it's not bouncing all over the lawn. It's putting down a nice heavy cut, if that makes any sense. Got a powerful motor, 
Even with this crappy blade, it's doing a very good job cutting. I'm not a big fan of this handle setup though. My hand's already tired of squeezing this shit together. I'm doing very limited movement with the phone, the camera, keep you guys in the shade. We are at uh, 4K60, so we are generating a lot of heat in the middle of July. So I can't really do too much with the camera. But I would say all in all, this is a success. Swapped out the cable. Had to prime the carburetor to get it started. Um, but it could also be that they haven't used it in a long time because the self-impulsion wasn't working. So, you know. And I had this thing on its side when I was washing it before I filmed. Um, so, that could be a problem. And then me trying to start it. But I can tell you I do not want to stop. I don't want to turn it off. I don't want to have to try to start it again. I would assume it'll start right back up, but what if it doesn't? Sounds good though, doesn't it? And that's a wrap.